Welcome to the Coding Loft. My name is Samuel and today you will learn how to sort and filter data in your React project using TypeScript. So for instance, I can change the order right here by clicking on sort by and I change to name from Z to A and now it's displayed in descending order and I can change back to ascending order. And the same for the filters. For instance, I can pick a specific cuisine right here, only Italian recipes or only Japanese recipes, for instance. And last but not least, we can also look for specific recipes, for instance, anything that has almond inside of the name. Without further ado, let's jump right into the project. Before we jump into the code, let's look at what we actually want to do. So before we get started, let's look at each of the recipes and at the information that it contains. Because what you see here inside of this view, you get from the recipe objects that we loop through. So for instance, we have difficulty that we can choose from. We have a category, whether it's a dessert, Italian recipe, Japanese, whatever. Whether they're gluten-free, sugar-free, nut-free and so on. And we want to use these data points in order to filter the output that we show here on the screen. So the method that you will learn today basically works with any kind of data object that you loop through in order to display it on the screen in your React project. Inside of our app, you can see that we have this output list right here, which corresponds to all of these recipe cards that we have inside of our app. Now the data that we pass in as a prop, we call it filtered data right here. And inside of our output list component, you can see that we then map through this data and we display each recipe as a recipe card component. So far, so good. Now, the thing that we want to do is that up here, we call this fetch CSV data function the first time that we render our component. Because in our case, the data comes from this CSV file, but in your case, it could be a JSON file, it could be a database somewhere, so it doesn't really matter. What's important is that in the end, we get an array consisting of different objects. Now you might wonder, where does this filtered data come from right here? Well, we have a new const up here that we call filtered data and a set function called set filter data, which is a state variable and it can be an array of different recipes that we defined inside of our interfaces. So this recipe interface basically tells our application what kind of form our recipe object can have. So as you can see, it needs to have all of these different properties, category, chef, comment, and so on until total time. So inside of Apple, we want to set a set of filters. We want to apply those anytime that, for instance, we choose a different cuisine filter right here, or when we sort our data, or when we search for a specific recipe. That's the kind of information that we want inside of an object called filters. And then second, we want to have a function called sort and filter recipes, which takes this filter object and then returns some kind of data. And down here, you can see that we call this sort and filter recipes function and we set our filtered data to whatever data we got back. So this filtered data then at the end is what we display as the data inside of our output list. So first of all, we need to define an interface for this filters object. What kind of form can it have? And this we call filter object, we will start with that. Then we will set a default filters object and we will move on to actually writing our sort and filter recipes function. You can skip ahead to the different parts using the timestamps below this video. So inside of our interfaces file, we want to create a new interface that is called filter object. And we use curly brackets right here. And now inside of this filter objects, we want to specify all of the properties that it can have. So these are all of the different properties that we want to use as filters or as sorting options. So looking back at our application right here, for instance, this search bar at the top, we want to have a specific search term, right? So this will be the first property that we have called search term, and it can be of type string only because we type a string into the search field. Then in the filters, you can already see it. We want to filter by cuisine as well as time and some more. So here we can simply say we want to have a property called cuisine and this can be an array of any at the beginning and we will specify this in just a second. And then we also had time, which again can be an array of different options, which has any type for now. But in TypeScript, we want to be as specific as we can. So for instance, cuisine, we don't want to just insert anything. We could be more specific and say it should be just an array of strings. Same for time, or we could use a number instead, right? But in our case, for cuisine, for example, I only want to have specific values that I can provide. And for that, I use types. So at the same level, we have a folder called types. And in here, we can specify certain types. 
So one of those types you can see already, I've written them out, is called cuisine. So cuisine can be German, Italian, Japanese, Vietnamese. So only specific strings that we define up here can be shown. So now in order to use them, we can import them at the top. So we say we want, how is it called? Cuisine difficulty, yes, no, and time option. Cuisine difficulty, time option, and yes, no, from, and the path was the current directory, we go out of it and we go inside of the types directory and we use the types file. So now we have access to those types. So cuisine should just be an array of cuisine, basically meaning that it can only have those specific strings that we specified in here. And the same is true for time. We only want these time options that we have specified here. So less than 30 minutes, 30 to 60 minutes and more than 60 minutes. So here we don't use a number or a string, but we say this is an array of time option. So it can only have these specific strings. So then we want to have an option for gluten-free and it can be just of type yes, no, and an array containing either, as you can see, yes or no, right? Those are the only two strings that are allowed. So it can be empty this array, it can have yes, it can have no. And we do the same for sugar-free, for nut-free, and for soy-free. Then we have two more. We have this difficulty right here. So basically saying this can be either easy, intermediate, or advanced recipes that we want to show. So we say difficulty, and then it can be an array of type difficulty. And last but not least, we want a time option. So basically showing different types that the recipe can have. So we have time option as our type and that's it. Now we have our interface for a filter object. So right now TypeScript knows exactly what form this object can have when we use it in our code. So let's copy this and inside of our app, we have this filters object right here and we said this should be an object of type filter object. So in the beginning, we want to set certain default values. So we just copy and paste this indent this one time and then we get rid of this string that we have here. So we select the colon, press control D to select the next ones. Then we go up to the word and we delete everything that follows. So up here, we just want to have an empty string and for the rest, we want to have empty arrays in the beginning. We forgot one thing. So for our sorting option right here, we want to either have ascending or descending order. So in order to do that for the interface, we add another property called sort, and this can be of type sort option. And again, an array. So this can be an array of sort option. And of course we haven't defined this yet. So we want to import it from our types file and you can see it doesn't exist yet. So we need to write it out. And down here, we will say export type sort option and this can be either of type ascending or descending, nothing else. Back inside of our app you can also see that it complains because we have to add this sort option as well. And we can either add ascending or descending, we will have ascending as the default. And of course this should not be an array right here but just sort option so it can either be ascending or descending. Now comes the interesting part. So let me close this here on the left so we have more space. Now we want to start with the sort and filter recipes function. So what does this actually do? Well, this is a function that takes in this filter object right here that we specified and it returns the data that we got at the beginning when we fetched the data, right? So this is all of the different recipes currently are saved inside of this data object. And we want to say we only want to return specific data. So only those that we now filter using the filter function. We want to return a filtered data array that is based on the data with all of the different recipes. So we run a callback function with each of the different recipe items that we have. So when we iterate over this data array, we look at each of the different items and we want to test different conditions based on this filter object that we pass in as the argument. So we return something. So in the beginning, let's look at the first thing that we want to check. We want to check for this search term. And we say, if the item that we have, if the property recipe name exists, then we want to see if the property recipe name to lowercase. So we want to have everything in lowercase just to make sure that we don't have any spelling mistakes. And we want to see, well, does it include whatever we currently have inside of our search term property? The way that we do that is we call this index of function. So we say item that recipe name dot lowercase. So the current recipe name is lowercase. 
Does it include filter object dot search term dot to lowercase as well? And then of course it should be larger than minus one because when it's minus one, that means we don't have this property. If it's larger than minus one, then it means that this filter object search term is found inside of recipe name. So we return true in that case. And I'll press option Z. So we have everything inside of our view here. So to check, we can also console.log our filter object dot search term. And let's try it out in our project. So I open the console as well. And when I type something here, for instance, element, you can then see that that's the search term inside of our object. And that's the output that we see. So the recipe name is only shown if element is included. Same is true with bread then only recipes with bread inside of the recipe name are shown. Now, if you wonder why we already see this inside of our recipe output right here, I've already created a function inside of our filter menu component that handles the input that we type inside of this field. So whatever we type in here is handled by this function. And what this function basically does, it looks at the event and then it updates our filters with whatever the current search term is. And it gets it by using e.target.value. Right, so this set filters function right here sets our filters object. And every time this input changes, we call this handle input function. And this handle input function sets our filters to the current filters and the updated search terms. And now we can expand this sort and filter recipes function to check for other conditions as well. So to check if other filters are present. So let's do this again with cuisine. This is the first check, that's why I put it into brackets, where we check if the search term is found inside of the recipe name. If that condition is true, then the item is returned. And now we want to add a second condition. So we have the double ampersand here. And in our second condition, we want to look at the array called cuisine. So we want to see if we have specified any cuisine. And the way that we do that is we look at the filter objects and at the cuisine array. And if the cuisine array is empty as it is right now, then we want to show all of the available cuisines. So we make a simple test. We say is filter object dot cuisine dot length larger than zero. If that is the case, then we want to do something. If it's not the case, then we want to return true. So this means that when we have not specified anything as we do in the beginning, we want to always return true, meaning we want to show all of the different recipes. Now, if we do specify something, for instance, if we say we want the Italian recipes, then this condition is true because cuisine.length is now larger than zero. In that case, we only want to return the item if filter object dot cuisine dot includes whatever the item has inside of the cuisine property. So also to see what's going on here, we can see whatever we have specified inside of cuisine. So right now we haven't specified anything inside of cuisine. That means that we will see all of the different recipes. If inside of this filters object right here, I would say for instance, only the German recipes, then we can now see that filter object inside of cuisine has German included, and we only see the German recipes. That's what we want. And this can of course hold several options. So for instance, Italian and German, and now we would see German and Italian recipes. Set this back to an empty array. So I have already made this interactive right here, where when I click Italian, it pushes Italian inside of our filters object. Now you can see that we only see the output that have Italian recipes. If I add Thai, for instance, I can also see the Thai recipes. And by the same logic that we have down here, we can now add additional checks to see if any of these other properties are true. So the last thing I want to focus on right now is actually adding a sorting option. So in the beginning, we filter all of the data by specific conditions that we specify in here. And then in the second step, we can sort whatever output we have. So the way that sort works is that we call a callback function and it takes two parameters that is inputs A and B. And let's just say it's of type any. And we want to sort the recipes by their name in either ascending or descending order. So starting either from A to Z or from Z to A. To do that, we create a variable called name A and A and B refer to the recipe object that we have. And in here we have a property called recipe name. That's where we want to compare and we want to transform it to lowercase. And we do the same down here with a variable called name B. In here we say whatever B is, we also want to take recipe name and we want to transfer it to lowercase. 
And now what we want to do is we want to again look at the filter object that we have. And in here, if you remember, we have a property called sort. And if sort is descending, then we want to do something else if filter object dot sort is ascending, then we want to do something else. So we want to return either one or minus one. And there's a function called locale compare. And oops, it has to be name B. So name B dot locale compare with name A. And we do the same down here. So name A dot locale compare to name B. Even if neither is the case, then we want to return zero, meaning they have the same value. And I have a small typo, this should be locale with an E in here. So now you can see it is in ascending order. That's the default that we specified up here. If we now change this to descending order, it will show all of the recipes starting with Z all the way down to A. So let's look at our sorting option, filter object dot sort. And we change this back here to ascending as well. And now you can see when it first loads, the sort order is ascending. And when we change it, we change it to descending. So let's sum up what we did in this video. First, we created a state variable called filters, which is an object of type filter object. So inside of filter object, we said, how can this object look like? It can have certain properties that need to have a certain form. For instance, cuisine, as you can see, can only have German, Italian, Japanese, and so on as values. Then we set our default object. So the first time that our app renders, all of those values are set, pretty much empty arrays, an empty string, and down here we have the ascending order. And then we created a function called sort and filter recipes. So this returns the data, so all of our recipes, and first we filter them. So in here we specify different conditions, such as our recipe name, does it include the search term? Or do we have a cuisine specified? If so, is it included inside of whatever the current recipe item has? And that way we can set a lot of different conditions that we want to use as filters for our data. And then in a the second step, we add the sort method down here. So there we want to sort all of our recipes by name. So we get two constants, name A, name B. So sort always compares two different objects of an array. A and B, and we get the first recipe name and the second recipe name from A and from B. And then we check whether filter object is descending or ascending. And we call this name B dot locale compare name A function or name A dot locale compare name B, which either returns one or minus one because this sorting method always needs a numeric value in order to sort A and B. So that's our sort and filter recipes function. So whenever we render our app for the first time, we get all of the data and we save it via the set data method. And then once the data is set or anytime we change any filters, we then get a new data property in this block scope by calling the sort and filter recipes function. We pass in the current filters and then we set our filtered data. So down here for the output list, we then pass our filtered data as the data that we want to be displayed. And that's how you can then sort and filter recipes inside of your React app based on different sorting and filter options that you choose. And I know this can be a little confusing in a TypeScript project, so it would be great if you let me know in the comments down below if what I explained was easy to follow or a little confusing. If it was confusing, I will try to make it better next time. And of course, if you did find this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.